Thank you for having us. Nigeria ICT sector in 2017 experienced quite a number of changes in terms of opportunities and downward spiral where some telecom organizations are being taken over by banks, some startups are winding up, while some other startups are opening, some are being given grants. It's experienced mixed of this. What would you say 2017 is? 2017 was our most challenging year by almost every index. But yet it was our most interesting year as a company. So, you know, so if it sounds like an oxymoron, I don't know. It was very challenging, but you know, our most interesting year. What is the impact of precise financial systems, products, services, and innovation when it comes to the Nigeria ICT sector as in general, and also the consumer of technology when it comes to fintech and software ecosystem? Interestingly, quite a few things have happened. Uh, in, in fact, quite a few things happened in 2017. That's why I said it was a challenging year, but yet a very interesting year. So um, one of the most important success stories of, of PFS uh, happened last year, and that was the, uh, the, the, the launching of, of, of the national switch. Uh, the ACH switch uh, today, uh, which is being operated by NIPS. Uh, so that, that was a product that was uh, delivered uh, by Precise Financial Systems. And it's, it's quite significant. Now, why is it significant? Um, so before now, uh, people would have thought that such a solution couldn't be delivered by an African or a Nigerian uh, company. So again, we put a lie quite a few myths that have been around for so many years that there's some black magic that some um, Indians or um, Europeans or Americans have. It's not about any magic, it's about these principles are eternal. Any company that has chosen to be competent and to be disciplined can actually achieve what any other company can achieve anywhere in the world. And that's quite significant because it's again alluding to the fact that Nigerians have solutions to the challenges of the national problems and of course to challenges that are in the world altogether. What is the outlook of 2018 for Precise Financial System? For us, and uh, it's interesting, we see ourselves as a global company um, and so our outlook is going to be a lot and it's always been like that for uh, the past seven to ten years. We, do, we, we take a look at Nigeria and say we want, one of our things we want to do is to make our business from Nigeria to be maximum of 15% uh, of, what, of what we do. Uh, so today we have clients in more than 35 countries. Uh, so we, we, the most important thing uh, for us as a company uh, is to strengthen and deepen our penetrations outside of Nigeria. Uh, because if one of the things I say, and, and I'm going to say this with a lot of sense of responsibility, and I'm, I'm not castigating anybody, but it is just the way we see things. Um, we see that Nigeria has a lot of learning to do when it comes to understanding what it takes to set up and maintain a serious business. Uh, so uh, we understand that, and like I said, we are not criticizing it, but we know that it's a constraint, and so we are, there are two ways to look at it. We can look at the constraint and brood over it. We can look at the constraints and walk around it. So we've taken a decision that we're going to walk around it. So as we are going, we want to reduce the percentage of business that we are doing out of Nigeria. Professor Umar Gamba Dambata in 2017 at ITU made mention that Nigeria ICT sector witnessed investment and turned into $70 billion. But most of these investments are foreign direct investment. What is your own opinion on this? That's interesting. So when people look at what they call investments, um, and they talk about the ICT industry, uh, sector, which is quite interesting. It's, it's quite an interesting, I use the word gamut right now, because uh, the ICT as it is being talked about, needs to be unpacked. So if you look at a lot of the 70 billion you're talking about, you realize that, well, I mean, I, I want to be careful because whatever I say, I, I want to be able to be 
to, to defend it on the scholarly level. But I can hazard a hypothesis that more than 85% of this figure is driven by the communications sector. And that's why, you know, the person that has spoken about it uh, has spoken from, from the NCC standpoint. Of course, yes, you can understand that. But the question about this is how much of this so-called investment benefits Nigerians? Because, you see, when you look at what you call investments, and you have to be very smart about what you call investments, investments to people look like whatever you have fixed, like assets and stuff like that. But that's a way to look at it in accounting terms. But the way to look at it as a financially literate person is that anything that doesn't give you money cannot be counted to be an investment. Apart from the fintech space expanding in 2017, yes. there are other emerging sectors in the ICT sector actually experiencing change. What would you say has been the greatest change for Nigeria ICT sector in 2017 and the expectations for 2018? It's not difficult to, order to follow these things. But the challenge is whether they are going to happen or not. But if you ask me for the expedient things to happen, it's easy. We need to look at what are the areas that we have pain most as a nation. When we understand the areas that we have the highest pain, then it follows that that's where we need solutions. But one of the challenges I've seen here is that we somehow do not follow that very simple logic that I have used. So, the problem here is very clear. We are contracting. We are actually violating the intentions and the laws of God. Where God expects us to create species after us that are better. We are creating species after us that are worse. So, that needs to be fixed. Because if it doesn't get fixed, the nation, one day will just become inexistent. So, our educational system needs to be taken a very good look at. How about security? Yes, we say Boko Haram has been defeated, but again, there are other security issues. Now, those are areas of high challenges, but understanding that challenges and opportunities are two sides of the same coin. My thinking would have been that those are the areas that we should have investments. Those are the areas that we should have development for solutions for Nigeria by Nigerians and in Nigeria. Thank you so very much for your time. It's been a pleasure.